Namaste, beautiful souls. This is Dr. Danny. Today, I am so excited to share with you a guided meditation that I created. This meditation is inspired by a recent trip I made to Sedona, Arizona. In this meditation, we will tap into our own infinite light and anchor it into the energy grid of the earth. Before we get into the meditation, let me discuss Vortex Energy a little bit and share my experiences in Sedona. You can close your eyes if you like or softly gaze at the screen, but for now, just sit back, relax, and listen. For those of you that may not be familiar with Sedona, there are four popular Earth Energy vortices located there. People travel from all over the world just to Sedona for healing, inspiration, insight, and manifestation. Hopeful that connection to Earth Vortex energy will correct and realign their own energy field to that of the Earth's energy field. But what exactly is an Earth energy vortex? And how do we know it's real? All living things, including Earth, has an electromagnetic field surrounding it. This field is not just a sphere, but it's actually in the shape of a donut, or what's called a toroid, and it spins or rotates. The electromagnetic energy in this field spins and rotates and twists, flowing through the center of the source and around it. If you place iron filings around a magnet, for example, and spin the magnet, you will see that the filings arrange themselves in this toroidal pattern. Humans also have this type of field surrounding them, and the source of this field is our beating heart. Some people can actually see the electromagnetic energy field around others, and that's what we call the aura. So the idea is that there are certain locations on Earth along field lines of the Earth's electromagnetic toroid where pure Earth energy is stronger or more concentrated. Sedona, Arizona is one of these places. While I was there, I visited four of the better known vortices in Sedona, Bell Rock, Cathedral Rock, Airport Mesa, and the Chapel of the Holy Cross. Synchronistically, from an aerial perspective, these locations are actually in the shape of a cross. So let me tell you a little bit about how I experienced each of these vortices, and then I'll guide you through the meditation and then give you several moments at the end to stay within your own vortex energy anchored to the Earth's grid. So the first vortex was Bell Rock. This was such a beautiful, amazing place with a serene, feminine energy to it. My husband and I found a secluded ledge and I placed my quartz crystal in direct sunlight and I played my singing bowl. My husband, who's not really a woo guy, definitely not into hallucinogenins, and doesn't drink, nudged me out of my meditation to point out that my clear white quartz crystal was glowing blue. So I opened my eyes, I picked up the crystal, held it in my hand and examined it, and it looked perfectly normal. So once I placed it back down on the rock and I played my bowl again, I too noticed a blue glow to the crystal. We wanted to document this amazing phenomena and we took all kinds of pictures, but unfortunately, none of our images actually showed the phenomenon as we saw it. Nevertheless, we sat there for over two hours observing the crystal and feeling into the energy of blue, uh, of Bell Rock's blue energy. On our way back to the car, we noticed how certain rocks scattered on the ground of all sizes had a shiny blue glow to them. They literally looked like bright polished turquoise until we picked it up. In our hands, the rocks were a normal color of gray. Once we placed it back on the ground, the rocks would slowly retain that bright, shiny turquoise color. And the farther we walked away from Bell Rock, the less blue on the ground we would notice. Literally, all the photos and uh, documentation we took of it showed no evidence of our experience. That night I had an interesting dream. I dreamt about ants of all sizes, all colors, black ants, red ants, those yellow ants, big, small, running back and forth along 
a busy, crowded highway of ants. But it was very detailed. The very next day, we visited Cathedral Rock. On the road to the parking lot, we spotted a lone coyote in broad daylight crossing the road. It's unique enough to actually spot a coyote, but in the middle of the day, all by itself, it was very interesting. The energy here at this site was very masculine. The climb to the top was terrifying and strenuous, yet everyone coming up to that first ledge had that quote-unquote moment of truth. Can I do this climb? I will admit I felt a strong pull to just go for it. But I know my limits, and I opted to climb as far as I could and just hang out with my bowl and crystal and observe. Now, as I observed, droves of humans pushing their limits and taking on the climb, I was reminded of the ants in my dream the night before. People were drawn to take on this climb like ants are drawn to water and electrical energy. In fact, if I squinted my eyes, I sort of saw a line of ants as I was watching people go up and down the narrow, steep path. My crystal was glowing like crazy blue, and yes, my normal husband saw it too. As we returned to the parking lot along the trail, we also noticed the same blue rock phenomenon that we had seen the day before at Bell Rock. A dry riverbed that crossed the trail uh, were positioned very large rocks, bigger than our backpacks, that were bright turquoise blue. Once again, we tried to catch the effect of the light with our cameras, but they didn't pick it up. I was excited for the next day because we planned to visit two vortices, the airport mesa and the chapel of the Holy Cross. These were both easier hikes than the days before. The airport mesa was very soft, quiet, peaceful, a gorgeous view, and it had a kind of a protected feminine energy to it, a little bit more subtle than Bell Rock and definitely more subtle than Cathedral Rock. So I placed my crystal and I started up my singing bowl, and once again, a blue glow emanated from my crystal. On our way back to the parking lot, we noticed the exact same bright blue rocks, the phenomenon fading the further we walked from the vortex. The Chapel of the Holy Cross, however, was a totally different and strange experience. This place was masculine. It was busy. There were signs everywhere on the edge of the parking lot and sidewalk saying, stay in the parking area, a fragile environment. The chapel itself was small and rustic. Jutting out from the rock overlooking the valley below, the chapel is actually so beautiful to behold. Once inside, it's quiet and warm. There's lit candles for sale and there's a gift shop down below. About eight sets of pews on either side of one central aisle face an enormous crucifixion scene. Towering 20 feet was a gnarled apple tree with golden apples hanging from it and a crucified Christ in a loincloth and all the usual stigmata. A hairy bearded Christ stared down at Adderance with wide yellow eyes. There were actually 14 stations of the cross instead of 12 along the sides of the chapel. Unfortunately, due to the crowds at this location, there was really no place for me to sit outside and chill with my crystal and singing bowl. We also noticed that the rocks on the ground all looked very normal. In other words, there was no blue tint to any of them. I wondered if the vortex energy was somehow contained or not at all where it was advertised to be. I could still feel something about this place, but I wasn't sure what I was feeling. We decided to leave, and as we were walking to the car, I noticed a small trail leading to the higher rocks behind the chapel. We decided to see where the trail led and came upon channels of vortex energy. So what I mean is that sometimes we saw blue rocks, and sometimes we didn't. Sometimes my crystal would glow when I placed it on the ground, and sometimes it wouldn't. This was about a half mile away from the chapel on a higher ledge. When I looked back at the chapel from this vantage point, I observed the same ant phenomena imagery from before. So now whether inadvertently or purposely, my theory is that the vortex located in the chapel of the Holy Cross has either been harnessed, contained, or both. The static and chaotic lines of blue energy were so anemic compared to the abundant and 
flowing energy around the other three vortices. The imagery in the chapel was so eerie and full of hidden meaning. Such a strange boxy shape for a Catholic chapel. Why were there 14 stations of the cross instead of 12? Why an apple tree? In, of all places. There was also this strange looking metal sculpture off the sidewalk leading to the chapel of a person in the middle of a cross holding two birds with their beaks touching the top of the head of the person. Very similar in imagery to the Ankh. My theory is that this energy is very real, very powerful, and when it's not being artificially contained, vortex energy is easily accessible. So during this meditation, we are going to tap into that blue energy. We are going to access our soul, our soul star chakra and our earth star chakra. These are portals of energy in our own toroidal electromagnetic field that connect with the heavens and the earth respectively. When we are in sync with the vortex energy, not only of our heart, but of the earth and of the universe, we find ourselves aligned, powerful, and in love with all of creation. So now I invite you to close your eyes if you haven't already and get into a comfortable position, either sitting or lying down, and take several deep breaths with me. The frequency of the music for this meditation is 528 hertz. This frequency is a solfeggio frequency and is aligned to the heart chakra. And this is where our meditation will begin, the source of our own electromagnetic field. Breathing in deeply with me. And breathing out. As you exhale, release, let go, and relax. Inhaling deeply again. And exhaling. One more deep cleansing breath with me in. And out. As you release the last deep breath, your muscles relax and your mind relaxes. Breathing normally, slowly, allow your heart to open. Visualize with me a small but bright blue light in the center of your chest. Feel a slight buzzing or tingling sensation in this space. Any feelings that come up for you from activating this space let these feelings blend into the bright blue energy. And as you breathe slowly in and out, increase the size and brightness of this blue energy, expanding in an upward and downward direction through the tube of your spinal column. As this blue energy spreads upward and downward, let it activate and open the chakras above and below your heart, your throat chakra, and your solar plexus chakra. These now become the top and the bottom expansion points of your field of blue energy surrounding your heart. Feel the subtle, tingling electricity as it expands around you. Breathing in deeply. And as you reach the top of your breath, contract your abdominal muscles and let out a big sigh as you exhale. Ah. On your next inhale, allow the tingling blue energy to expand out, upward and downward once again until the field contacts your sacral chakra, 
and your third eye chakra. With your eyes closed, train your gaze slightly upward and inward. You may begin visualizing more clearly and you may begin to feel the energy more intensely and deeply in your belly. Just allow to feel whatever comes up at this level, breathing slowly and deeply here. Keeping your gaze trained upward and inward for a few moments, allowing the blue energy to activate and open the third eye and the sacral chakras. Inhaling deeply. Exhale, letting out a big sigh and relaxing your inner gaze. Inhale deeply once more, expanding the blue energy field emanating from your heart center upward and outward and downward toward your crown chakra and your root chakra. Encasing and surrounding your entire body in this blue energy field. Feel the blue energy pulse out from the center of your chest in all directions with the beating of your heart. There is one more step to complete before connecting your electromagnetic field to the next level of chakras and anchoring your light into the energy grid of the Earth's vortex energy. Place your dominant hand in the center of your chest and your other hand resting with the palm facing upward. Take a deep breath in. And slowly release your breath. On your next inhale, you are going to take back all of your fractals and fractured bits of energy that are orphaned in the universe. Allow your heart to call to the missing pieces of yourself Call them from the dark corners of the universe and bring them lovingly back into your electromagnetic field. Receive your missing light through your receptive hand that is open. As you reclaim your pieces of light through the receptive hand, let the energy flow up the same arm up and in through the shoulder of the same arm and right into the center of your chest. You may be able to feel a slight tingle of energy as this process unfolds through the hand, up the arm and down the shoulder. Really visualize this flow of energy and feel yourself becoming complete and whole. Just breathe into this process 
and allow your heart to swell with joy as you pull back all of your unused energy from the universe. Rest your hands in whatever way is comfortable. And on your next inhale, let the blue light expand outward one more level. And exhale. At this level, your awareness of blue energy will connect and plug into the Earth Star Chakra just below your root chakra and the soul star chakra just above your crown. Picture your form in the center of a toroidal vortex structure. The beautiful, pure soul that you are emanates from the center of your chest. A brilliant, blue, blinding light. A singularity in time and space, energy into matter and the source of creation. The soul star chakra is the portal to pure divinity and the earth star chakra is our anchor to all matter. Our souls are the conduit. Now imagine the Earth herself from space. From this high up, you can see flashes of light all over the planet. These points of light become nodes and connect to one another through lines of energy, forming a grid, or what looks like a polygonal shield all around the Earth. These nodes, these points of light, are the awakened souls of planet Earth, just like you. By tapping into and anchoring this grid of light through your own infinite vortex of energy, you, yes you, all by yourself, enhance, enrich, and give life to planet Earth. By pulling your own energy back and plugging into the root star and the soul star chakras, you become the conduit of cosmic divinity. Your reality will shift into its highest timeline. Your purpose and your role here on Earth will become manifest before your very eyes. I hope you know how powerful you truly are. I will leave you here for 10 more minutes to continue channeling divine light into the earth grid. When you're ready, or when the music stops, remember to pull the blue light back to your center and slowly come up out of the meditation with a smile on your face. In love with the universe, namaste.